Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Covenant Custom. Today I'm going to be covering this 3D Genius filament dryer with hygroscopic engineering plastics on the horizon. I needed a dryer that exceeded 50C. The three key points on this dryer is that it's budget friendly, has three modes, which will take care of everything from PLA to polycarbonate nylon, and it has up to a 36 hour runtime before going back to default. Everybody loves an unboxing, so let's get to it. Now, I will say that despite having a matte coating on this dryer, it did not pick up fingerprints as much as I thought it would, which was pleasantly surprising. Now let's get into a quick overview of the dryer as a whole. There are three pass-through points for the filament, one being on the front casing with the other two in the top lid. All three of them have rubber grommets to receive PTFE. On the inside, you'll see that there is insulation on both of the walls, which is a nice touch. For the heating element, they do have ports for 360 degree air circulation, and these rolling bars to suspend the filament spool. On the front, you'll have a power, a mode, and two adjustment buttons, both up and down. And on the rear, you have your power port and the power switch. On the bottom, you'll see that the four corners sport these rubber foot pads for the dryer to be seated on. And the remaining items in the box are going to be this user manual, which details the operations that I'll be going over in this video. You'll also be provided a power supply cord to be plugged into the rear. And two lengths of PTFP for the filament pass-throughs. And this is what intrusive thoughts looks like. Yeah, anyway. On the box, you'll see the five simple steps. You're going to plug it in, flip the switch and power it on, open it up, load it up, close it up, and choose whatever settings you're utilizing for the material that's going to be printed. After plugging it in and powering it on, the display will show you the hours on the left and the mode on the right. In order to select the mode, you'll press the mode button once and go through the three options available. To select the hours, you're going to press the mode button twice. And these buttons are nice because you can press and hold and wherever you release is where you'll be able to set it to, ranging from one hour to 36 or vice versa. For the max temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, it took five minutes to heat up to temp. As an additional step, in an attempt to keep moisture away from the filament, I'm going to be running PTFE directly from the dryer all the way to the print head. In order to do this, I'm going to need to cut two separate lengths, one from the print head to the runout sensor, and one from the runout sensor to the dryer. I'll start by removing the filament and the existing Bowden tube. Don't you go forgetting to remove that clip from the coupler now. After removing that length, I'll match it up against the new Bowden tube, which is a Creality Ultra Smooth PTFE. With the appropriate length, I'll go ahead and rid myself of the factory Bowden and clip it at that point. Since I purchased a 2 meter length of PTFE, I have a bunch of excess for whatever else is necessary. I match the two tubes against each other to make sure it's the appropriate length. Now, if you're wondering what's going on here, I did the drag chain delete on my K1. So within that mesh wire loom is the print head and cartographer cables. These are going to be supported by the Bowden tube, and the easiest way to install is to place one end in the print head and the opposing end in the runout sensor, making sure to reinstall the clip. Once both ends of the PTFE are in position, I will take some zip ties and loosely secure the cable to the Bowden tube. This allows me to work out any excess before I fully cinch them up. After cutting off the tails, I will move the print head around to make sure that there's no binding or areas that will be conflicting with the print head movement. Here's a quick example about how much support that PTFE provides. With the remaining length, I'm going to place one end in the bottom of the filament runout sensor. Because I'm going directly into the rear port of the dryer, I'm going to get an approximate length by placing it alongside before making a cut. After that cut is made, because I got the 2 meter option, I still have plenty left for another printer or to have on hand for maintenance down the line. Now let's secure the loose end of the PTFE coming from the runout sensor and place in our spool of filament. This is the Squid Ink Burnt Nebula ASA available from What's Kraken and it looks absolutely phenomenal. For the placement of the spool, the filament is going to be routed from the bottom up. After guiding the filament through the Bowden setup all the way to the print head, I'm going to unlock the extruder gear so I can perform a manual purge before locking the gear again. In the beginning of this video, I provided three key points which make 3D Genius filament dryer worth it. 
but it's worth noting some downfalls. With both my Soval and my Comgro units, their locking tabs on the front to secure the lid to the base, which the 3D Genius does not have. This would be nice if you live in a household with children or say a cat that likes to knock things off the table. Luckily I'm not dealing with either, so it's not a problem. And because of the rounded design, the filament feeding isn't as smooth as with the square box setup, but it is sufficient and hasn't caused any issues to this point. The last thing worth noting is that there's no humidity sensor on the 3D Genius dryer like the other two units on my desk, but this is easily noticeable in the quality of the print and who knows how accurate those sensors truly are. All in all, a single spool that had taken four days in a dual spool dryer took about a day and a half in the 3D Genius, and for that reason, I'd say that this is the best bang for your buck. With a price tag of $30, this 3D Genius has more pros and cons, and it will outperform a budget dual spool filament dryer. And less time drying means more time printing. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, or if you simply want to support the page, feel free to check out the copy link in the description below. I appreciate you all, and we'll see you next time.